All right, so here is a really good question involving um, masses and frictionless pulleys and talking about systems and things like that. So this is an example of a kind of a student question they asked me. If you guys have any physics questions you want help with, send it over to me at questions at bothwellstemcoach.com. I'm happy to take a look at it. But this is the kind of thing that I do for a lot of my students all the time. If they have any questions or problems, I'll make a video to explain them. I make like, I don't know, at least like 20, 30 videos per week um, solving uh, problems for students. So let's take a look at this one here. We have three objects in the drawing connected by strings that pass over maxless and frictionless pulleys. Objects move and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the middle object and the surface of the table is 0.1. What is the acceleration of the three objects? Okay, so let's do this problem without systems first because systems can save you a little bit of time, but it, it helps if you understand how to do it without a systems, and then I'll show you a systems approach that can help you. Some people try to shortcut it, go straight to systems, but unless you can do the free body diagram here correctly first, you're not gonna be able to do it. Uh, the systems approach isn't necessarily gonna help you in most scenarios or help you understand how to solve problems. So let's do, Step one is we're going to draw the free body diagram. Okay, so we're going to do, let's do the 10 kilogram block. This is probably the easiest one. What are the rules here? We have gravity acting downward, mg, 10g. And then we have a rope here. We'll call this T1. T1 acting upward. It pulls on the 10 kilogram. Nothing else is touching the 10 kilograms, so we are done with that free body diagram. Notice that I don't care about the acceleration or anything like that. I only want to draw the forces that are acting on it. The 25 kilograms is a little bit easier, so let's do this as 25G. We've got gravity, and then we got another rope touching it. Now this rope is different from this rope. They're two distinct ropes, so this one gets a different one. Now, we assume that the tensions are uniform throughout the rope whenever we have friction-free pulleys and they're massless and things like that. We assume that the, the same rope is gonna have the tension uniform. That assumption will be will change when we get to rotation, but for now, this is what we're going to assume. All right, so um, now let's do the 80 kilogram block. Now this one is the more complicated one to draw the free body diagram, but we're always gonna start with gravity, 80 G. What else is touching it? We got two ropes touching it. T2's on the right side, so it's gonna pull to the right. That's what ropes do, they only pull. I got T1 touching on the left here of this block. Okay, and then I have this surface here also touching it. That exerts a normal force. And if there's friction, a frictional force parallel. Now here's the, there, here's the thing. Is the friction right or left? That would depend on the direction of the motion of it. Now let's assume, it wasn't really stated in this problem, but because this mass is heavier, let's assume that it starts at rest and what's gonna happen is, let's assume it accelerates to the right. It starts moving to the right there. Now, and that means the friction, because it's kinetic friction, will be to the left. Now, Couple of things to note about this is that um, if you get this direction wrong because it's not obvious in the problem which way it's going, then what will end up happening is the solved frictional force will be negative instead, which means it should have been pointing the other direction, okay? That's the consequence of it. But for this one, because this is heavier, this is 25, this is 10 kilogram, this one is going to um, accelerate to the right, or you know, it's probably gonna slide to the right. All right, step two is to identify the acceleration. Now, it might be zero, it might be moving, but in this case, because we're asking for the acceleration, there probably is an acceleration. In this case, because of our friction assumption, let's assume the acceleration is this way, this way, and this block will accelerate upward. Now, notice that they all are pointing in different accelerations in the direction of the motion that they'll be in, but it's the same amount because we assume the ropes are not like the, the length of them is not going to change it's like a fixed length rope so the acceleration is going to be the same it's not like a rubber band where it can get longer or shorter all right um then we want to assign positive negative directions and then do f net equals ma okay so now um, I also, when we do the accelerations, I do annotate it on the free body diagram. Not as a separate, not as an arrow on here, but I just note it that these are the directions of the acceleration <clears throat> because that will help us assign positive directions. My recommendation is to make the direction of the acceleration positive if you know it. Um, you don't have to, but that is my recommendation. The math will be easier if you make opposite the direction. It, let, let's say for this one I made, let's say this one I made up positive. 
then the acceleration would be negative a because it is going downward. So I make down positive because I like to keep all my variables like positive values. Just a personal preference. The assigned directions can be different for different free body diagrams, by the way, like I did here. So F net equals MA. We're going to add the forces on the free body diagram. T1 minus 10G is equal to 10 times the acceleration. This one, when I do F net equals MA, I do down as positive. So this is 25G minus T2 is equal to 25A. Remember the MA, the M in your MA is the mass of the free body diagram. This one, you have two, you have X and Y. So the X direction has the actual uh, acceleration. So that would be T2 to the right, force of friction to the left, T1 to the left, that equals 80 times A. And in the Y direction, Fn is up, 80G is down, so that's negative. And then there's no vertical acceleration because the acceleration is only to the right. There's no up or down acceleration. This is gonna equal zero. So really understand why that's zero. It's because the acceleration vector is only to the right. There's no upward or downward component there. Okay, now if you do this all correctly and, and, and follow this, one of the things that I like to do is I like to add all the equations together with the acceleration here. And that will eliminate, so I'm just gonna copy this one over here and copy this one over here. And the reason we do that is that will eliminate the tensions. I don't need to know the tensions yet or I'm looking for the acceleration first. And if I add these, you'll notice that minus T2 and plus T2 will cancel. And then T1 and minus T1 will cancel. And so this is 25G minus 10G minus force of friction is equal to add these up 115A, 25A plus 10A plus 80A. Now, if I use G of 10, this is 250 minus 100, so that's 150 uh, minus force of friction is equal to 115A. Now, I need to figure out what the force of friction is. Now, force of friction, because it's kinetic friction, is mu K times the normal force. That's 0 0.1 times the normal force. Normal force I can solve from over here is 80G, and if I use G of 10, that's 800. So this is 0 0.1 times 800, which is 80. So then I get 150 minus 80 is equal to 115A. This is 70 is equal to 115A. And I can solve for A as 70 divided by 115. And that gives me 0 0.61 meters per second squared. So that's the first part of this question. What is the acceleration of three objects? That What is the tension in each of the strings? Then we can use any of our equations to solve for the tension. So here I have T1 minus 100 if I use G of 10 is equal to 10 times 0 0.61. And then I can solve for T1 here. And I get 106 uh, Newtons. How about for T2? Um, this one's probably the easiest equation. That's gonna be 250 by G of 10, minus T2 is equal to 25 times 0 0.61. And then you can solve for T2 here. Using my calculator, I get 234.8 Newtons. So there, there's how we solved it. We didn't need systems. We didn't need any of that in order to solve this problem. We did need to draw all the three body diagrams, free body diagrams correctly. Now, let me show you what the advantage of with systems. With systems can save you a little bit of time, but you have to be really good at it. So we're gonna do a free body diagram of the three blocks plus the ropes between them. And when you, when, you, when you group things into a system, you get to ignore any internal forces. So I'm going to redraw it just to make sure you understand. And uh, let me erase it here. So we don't have to draw the, um, the ex we don't have to draw the tensions, basically. We're going to have gravity here, but we don't have to draw this tension because that's internal. This is going to be 80G. This is going to be normal force. Still same free body diagram stuff, except I don't need to draw the tension force, but I do have to draw all the external forces. That, that Those are things caused by external to the system. Okay, so the ropes are internal, but gravity is caused by the earth, which is outside of the system. Normal force is caused by this block here or table outside of the system. And friction is also caused by this table outside of the system. So we have to include those forces there. Now, with pulleys, we, we still want to identify the acceleration here, okay? But what we're going to do is we are going to rotate the thing so that all the acceleration is in a straight line, okay? 
So we're gonna, it's like we're gonna just rotate these two sides and make it like all horizontal. And mathematically, it's okay to do this. This is just to help you visualize the, the mathematics. Because all the pulleys are doing are changing the direction. So we're gonna straighten it out, but when you rotate it, we have to draw the vectors correctly like this. So this one's still vertical. This one's Fn. This is the force of friction here. And then this guy has 10g going this way. So that's the free body diagram of the system. And now everything is accelerating to the right with acceleration A. Mathematically, that is equivalent because all the pulleys did was really change the directions. So we're not physically changing the pulleys, but we're rotating them to straighten it out so that you can do the F net equals MA equation correctly. Let's say right is the positive direction. And when I do F net equals MA, we're going to say, where are the right forces? 25 G is to the right. Frictional force is to the left. 10 G is to the left. And that equals the mass of the system, which is all three blocks and the ropes. So the total mass is 115 kilograms times A. And note what you'll notice here is this equation right here. What we shortcutted is we got right here as well. Okay. We were able to skip out some steps here in order to get to this equation. Now, the force of friction is still equal to 80. So at this point, we're going to get the same thing. What you're going to get is the acceleration. You're going to be able to solve A a little bit faster than doing all of this. Now, however, you can't find the tensions. We have lost the tension information when we chose to do this. Okay, It's a trade-off. We lost, because the tension was embedded inside of the system, I cannot calculate the tensions. So even though this will help me find the acceleration, if I need to find the tensions, I still have to draw separate free body diagrams, not of the whole system, but, uh, but of each individual blocks. So we still have to do those free body diagrams for this problem which is why the systems won't necessarily save you like a ton of time. It will save you a little bit on algebra, but conceptually, it doesn't like you might still have to draw the free body diagram separately. So, but as you can see, we get to the same point, but a little bit faster with a little bit of tricks. And that's the whole point of the systems. It can save you some time and get you that acceleration faster, but it can still always be done with separate free body diagrams. So I always teach my students to do the separate free body diagrams first and solve it that way before you start trying to use shortcuts like systems because sh shortcuts are only to speed up how fast you understand it. If you cannot do it, it's not to replace this method. If you cannot solve it this way, okay, then I would not go straight to the systems method. You'll be able to solve some problems, but you'll probably mess up more than you can get correct. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. If you guys have any questions you want me to go through, send them over to questions at bothellstemcoach.com, and I'll see you in the next video.